Florida State got left out of the college football playoffs, and I'm not here to argue whether that was the right or wrong decision, but what I am going to do is take over as their coach in NCAA football, and I'm going to get them to the college football playoffs and maybe win a national championship in the process. Let's jump into this rebuild. Our weakest spots on offense headed into this rebuild are tight end and on the offensive line, and on defense, it seemed to be the linebacking core and the cornerback position. While we didn't find many recruits in those positions, we did find a gem in four-star receiver Mark Thomas and four-star halfback Aaron Wall. We had a pretty average strength of schedule here in year one, and hopefully the committee doesn't hold that against us. Despite being unranked to start the season, our first opponent, Pitt, outranked us on paper. It wasn't a great start for us as we would go down in the first quarter 3-0, but Jordan Travis would give us our first touchdown on the season as he'd scramble on this play to give us the lead. Headed into the fourth quarter, it was a close one, but Pitt would take the lead late here, and our defense just couldn't seem to get a stop all game long today, but Jordan Travis was doing his absolute best to try to get his Seminoles back in this game. The ensuing onside kick attempt would end up coming up short for us, and Pitt would end up getting the victory in our season opener. The following week we would add more prospects to our recruiting board and some of them already had us on their top list of schools. We were pumped about that and it carried over into our next game as we beat Nevada and already we had recruits wanting to visit our program so we would set them up for a week 14 visit against Appalachian State and we'd also have our first five-star recruit gain interest in us as well this season. We would come out and handle FCS Southeast as expected and then following this win against Boston College on the road we finally found ourselves back in the top 10 rankings. I don't know how long that would last though as we'd follow that up with a loss to unranked Maryland as that would drop us all the way down to number 19 and we're currently sitting at fourth place in our division. Thankfully that didn't seem to be affecting a lot of recruits on our board but we were in a tight battle for some top recruits with our rival school Miami. I was prepared for the worst result to happen in our game against number three Clemson this week and even though we lost we almost pulled off this big upset. We would end up losing our first recruit on our board however the following week to Notre Dame and it was looking like we could end up losing some others real soon too and hopefully this win against NC State would change some of their minds. This next game against Miami was a big one for us because two of our top recruits had Miami as their top school and we wanted to steal them away from the Hurricanes. We were down 13 to nothing to start the game and Jordan Travis was trying his best to get us back in this game before we headed into halftime but the offense as a whole just really seemed to be struggling to move the ball at all tonight against the Canes defense and as a result Miami would win this one 16 to 7 in our home stadium. Despite the loss we would get our first commits of this rebuild in four-star cornerback Paul Harris, four-star middle linebacker Jason Hines, and our first five-star commit Ray Mason the number nine receiver in the country and thank goodness they committed one they did because this was an ugly loss to Wake Forest. Somehow after that loss, we still got more commits to our school and those were four-star center Andrew Thomas, four-star defensive tackle Chuck Johnson, and another five-star with the number one tight end in the nation, Fred Nelson. We did however lose out on receiver Mark Thomas and guard Frank Maxey to our rivals Miami. We got back on the right track next week with a win against Syracuse but would lose out on four-star halfback Aaron Wall to Penn State. It was now visit week against Appalachian State for us and we would max out our royal treatment skill to give our recruits an extra 1,000 points on their visit. This game wasn't important just because of the recruits that were visiting us today, but because we had still yet to get our sixth win on the season, so a win here today against Appalachian State would finally make us bowl eligible this season, and it looked like we were going to get the job done here at home this game as we were running away with it in the fourth quarter, as with that win in the books, we were finally bowl eligible this season. The following week, we were one point away from ending our season with a top 10 upset against Florida, and as we headed into conference championship week, our two remaining recruits still hadn't made a decision yet. We finished year one at a disappointing 6-6. Six and six third place finish in our division as North Carolina would destroy Maryland in the ACC Conference Championship and they would go on to beat Ohio State in the National Championship game as we'd be stuck in the Tony the Tiger Sun Bowl. This team really wanted to end the first season with Coach Husky on a good note as a loss today would give them a below 500 final record. But unfortunately for us our defense just couldn't seem to keep the Oregon State offense out of the end zone all game long and we'd have to watch them celebrate their bowl game victory over us. We were losing quite a bit of players to the draft and graduation so it was imperative we got both of our last recruits on our board and thankfully they both sign on the dotted line giving us the 13th ranked recruiting class in the country and the number one class in the ACC. Hopefully season two would be a bit better for us as we had five players now rated 90 overall or higher including Jordan Travis who was headed into a senior year. That meant we needed a quarterback recruit this season as well as an offensive tackle, middle linebacker, and free safety. We didn't find any of those positions in preseason recruiting but did find these three gems that we added to our board. We were given a bit tougher schedule here in season number two but on paper should win our season open this year against Oklahoma State. We were off to a hot start as it wouldn't even take a minute for us to get our first touchdown this game and we would keep our foot on the gas pedal this entire first half. By the third quarter it was starting to turn into a blowout for us as we would hold out through the entire fourth quarter and we would get a win in our season two opener. The following week we added more recruits to our board and found Shannon Hayes who I think will be our quarterback of the future. Following a dominant win against FCS East we already had recruits ready to visit us and scheduled them for our game against Wake Forest. After a solid road win against Old Dominion we were 3-0 and off to a much better 
start this season. And we had a chance to get revenge against Pitt for last season's matchup, and it had definitely looked like they had fallen off a bit this year. We all know that ratings on paper mean nothing, though, as Pitt would be the first to score, but Jordan Travis would get us down the field to start the second quarter and would give us our first lead. That seemed to open the floodgates for this offense as we would keep on scoring, and by the fourth quarter, this game was starting to get extremely ugly for the Panthers, as I think it's safe to say we got our revenge this year. That win would put us in the top 25 rankings for the first time this season. We had a tough matchup the next week that might get us kicked out if we lost, but instead, we would pull off the upset and blow out number 14 Clemson at home. This seemed to impress some of the recruits on the board enough to commit as we got four-star halfback Steve Elford and four-star receiver Chris Wheeler. We would take on Maryland on the road next week and pull away with another win, and your Seminoles were now a perfect 6-0 at the top of the Atlantic Division. Four-star athlete Nick Weaver and three-star tackle Corey Underwood would commit after seeing that record, and hopefully we could make it 7-0 against Miami this week. Both of these teams were battling for some of the same recruits again, so that made this much more than just a regular rivalry game for us, because the outcome of this game could directly affect our program's future. Jordan Travis was doing his best to keep our team in this game, but the defense couldn't come up and make a stop when we needed them to tonight, and so yet again, we would lose to Miami. That would cause us to lose the lead on our top recruit, Billy Cooper, and our third-ranked recruit, Justin Seymour. Thankfully, we'd bounce back, though, with a big-time win against NC State, and after two bye weeks of recruiting, we regained the lead on top recruit, Billy Cooper, but would drop down to third on Justin Seymour's list of schools. Our first game back after two weeks off would be a win against Boston College, and we'd celebrate by signing our future quarterback, Shannon Hayes. We'd go out and defeat Syracuse no problem, as that win would put us in the top 10 for the first time this season. And it was now time for our game against Wake Forest, as we had two big recruits visiting this week. Hopefully a 41-7 blowout would get them to sign on the dotted line for us, but unfortunately, we had fallen behind on top recruit Billy Cooper again, and it looked like we were out of the race for Justin Seymour at this point. That didn't mean we couldn't finish the season on a strong note, though, as we would get the ball to start the game and put the first points on the board against Florida. And this game was close to becoming a blowout already by the start of the second quarter, as this was definitely not the game either teams were expecting, as we would end up coming out and playing the best game of football we've played all season long, and I couldn't think of a better way to wrap up the regular season for us. On the other hand, though, we were officially locked out from Justin Seymour, but we did get our top recruit in Billy Cooper, thankfully. With our only loss this year coming against Miami, we found ourselves in the ACC Championship against Virginia Tech. Jordan Travis ended up getting hurt for us on the very first drive of the game, so if we were going to win this game tonight, it would have to be up to our defense, because backup quarterback Tate Rotomaker was not playing well for us at all so far. He ended up having three turnovers in the first half alone for us, but when it counted the most, he would step up and deliver this dart of a throw for a touchdown to give us the lead, and after our defense would come up big and force the Hokies to pump the ball, we would run out the rest of the clock, and Coach Husky and the Seminoles were ACC champions here in season number two. Unfortunately, though, that wouldn't be enough to make it into the national championship, as Ohio State would thankfully lose it for a second straight year, and isn't this ironic that we'd be playing Alabama in the Rose Bowl? Man, did it feel great to have Jordan Travis back playing quarterback again for us, as he was the main reason we were staying in this game. It was a high-scoring back-and-forth game today, and I honestly thought that with this touchdown here, we were going to secure this game against Bama, but they would come back and take a one-point lead over us with less than a minute to go in the game. Jordan Travis would show off his senior leadership and talent as he would lead us down the field into field goal range, where we would kick the game-winning field goal against Alabama and would end season two as Rose Bowl champions. What a night and day difference between the first two seasons here for Coach Husky, but next year might be a little more difficult as he was losing many starters on both sides of the ball. But we also had a lot of top recruits coming in as well, as Coach Husky had the 14th ranked recruiting class in the country. And maybe things won't be as tough next season as this team is actually rated even higher than this year's team. We were starting out year number three, ranked number eight in the country, and once again, we are projected to win our division this year. But that might be tough if we can't beat teams like Texas State as we'd be upset in our season opener. Thankfully, we'd bounce back with a dominant win over Notre Dame and a road win against Virginia to open up ACC conference play. A rocky start to the season, however, did cause us to lose a fourth of our recruiting board already to other schools, and this season wasn't going to get any easier for us going forward, as near the end of the first quarter, we were still trailing to Maryland and had yet to score. We were having to play catch up with the Terrapins all night long, and we wouldn't take our first lead of the game until about halfway through the third quarter. It didn't help that starting quarterback Tate Rotomaker went down with an injury, so backup AJ Duffy would have to lead the team the rest of the fourth quarter tonight, but he did what was needed for his offense tonight, and we'd barely hold on for the win against Maryland. We had definitely seemed to start to turn things around from the start of the season, as we were now on a four game winning streak and would land our first recruit of the season and four-star quarterback Aaron Lowe. We had made our way back up to where we started the season in the top 25 rankings, and hopefully this dominant win against Boston College would move us up even more. That win would land us our second commit this season in four-star athlete Jeff Williams, and for the first time this rebuild, we were facing an unranked Clemson team, as man did they seem to fall off a cliff after last season. This next game I knew would be tough though, as we had yet to beat our rivals Miami in this rebuild so far. Our starting quarterback Tate Rotomaker was not making things any easier for 
us either as he became a turnover machine this game, but we still believed in him for now though, and it would pay off as he would get us the go-ahead touchdown here in the fourth quarter, and that would be enough for us to finally get a win over our rivals Miami. We'd follow up that rivalry win with two more W's against NC State and Wake Forest, and those wins would land us the top punter in the nation and Ernest Henry, the ninth ranked middle linebacker in the country. We now had a matchup against Syracuse, who was surprisingly ranked in the top 25 this year, but their ranking wouldn't last long if we had anything to say about it. Maybe I spoke too soon though, as we were really struggling again on offense tonight, specifically Tate Rotomaker, who was throwing way too many interceptions for my liking again. So I made the decision to start true freshman Shannon Hayes in the second half, who was one of our top recruits in last year's class and the future quarterback of this program. Right now, our defense was the only reason that we were still winning this game, but it was time to see how Shannon Hayes would look in his very first collegiate game at quarterback, and I kind of expected this, but his first drive would end up stalling out on him. He would come back in the fourth though, as we were down 10 to seven and make this absolute dime of a throw to Deuce Spawn, who would come down with it inside the Syracuse 20. And on the very next play, he would find Malik McLean for the go-ahead touchdown as the true freshman quarterback had led us to a comeback victory. That win would land four more recruits for us, and with our last game of the season in the swamp, we would come out and defeat Florida 31 to 28 to close out the regular season. That would still leave us on the outside looking in at the playoffs though, as we were ranked number five, but a win against number one North Carolina in the ACC championship should get us in. If we wanted to beat the number one team, we had to be aggressive tonight, and it was clear from the start that Coach Husky was going to do just that. Tate Rotomaker had seemingly put his earlier struggles behind him as he would facilitate a drive that would help give us the lead over UNC headed into halftime, and he would continue this great play headed into the second half as he was doing whatever he could to help us keep our lead over the Tar Heels who just wouldn't seem to go away. They were proving to us why they were ranked number one in the country as they were down by two possessions but would end up tying this game up at 35 with 30 seconds left to go. That was too much time though for Tate Rotomaker as this play would get us in the field goal range with three seconds left as we would come out and kick the game winning field goal and for the second year in a row, Coach Husky and the Seminoles were ACC champions. We then found out that not only did our halfback Trey Benson win the Heisman Award but that also beating number one North Carolina would get us into the playoffs as the three seed. That meant we'd be playing number two Penn State in the first round and unfortunately they would get the first points of the game but we would answer right back with a kick return touchdown. Our offense would stall out next possession but we'd still manage to get three points and then defense would get a huge fourth down stop which would lead to this touchdown right before halftime for us. We would get a quick six to start the second half but just because we were up by two possessions did not mean that this game was over yet for Penn State as Tate Rotomaker would give them the ball back with great field position with this horribly ill-advised throw. But once again our defense would come up big time on fourth down and after running the clock out to triple zeros we had officially won our semi-final matchup and we're going to the national championship. It would be a three versus four seed matchup as Texas would upset number one Oregon in their game and this would be the finale. I know that I initially said I wanted to get Florida State to the playoffs but I think it would be even better if we could over deliver on that promise and get them a national championship. It is crazy to me that we have made it this far in three seasons after going six and seven and losing our bowl game in year one and in a span of two short years following that season we could be national champions with one more first down here as all that was left was for us to take a knee and we had officially done it for Florida State. Not only did we get them to the college football playoffs but they were now college football playoff national champions as well with coach Husky Nation.